This is Tom Bain, and this is Wine, Money, and Song. Please press the like button and please subscribe if you enjoy the content and let other people know who are interested in wine. So today we're going to cover, I found the 95 point wine and it sells for $11.49. Really? Now, $11.49 is a pretty low price to pay for wine. To me, $20 is the average price most people are paying. Um, and I saw this little blip of, of uh, a write-up of a wine that I can buy for $11.49 that's 95 points. Is that possible? Well, of course it's possible. But I just want you to understand the reason why I'm doing this channel is I don't want to be parading thousand dollar bottles of wine that I drink and, and big tastings I go to. And when I get together with other collectors that we, we throw money around and uh, it's sort of like uh, Sagam and Gomorrah with drinking <laughs> endless glasses of wine. Those great wines are priced at that pr price because of history. And I don't want to represent expensive wines. I want to find wines of value that you can put your hands on, readily available, and that offer great value to you. And, and that's the most important thing I could give you. Telling you about my past adventures and I'm over someone's house and I have these great ones. Yeah, but that, that, that's, that's really the glamour part. And I'm lucky enough that I've been in the industry and I have friends who have had these wines and they facilitated uh, me enjoying those wines. And it's nice, but it's not the real world. 98% of the people are not going to be drinking Lafitte, uh, drinking Latash from Romani Conti. Uh, so... This episode's about a wine, supposedly, and we're going to taste it, uh, that's an outstanding wine of 95 points. And at the end, I'm going to taste the wine. So the other day, I'm walking around in Costco. Now, I buy dog food there. I buy toilet paper there like everybody else. And I've been going to Costco forever. But they sell wine there. So... I walk in and I just take a look around and I'll buy their Kirkland brands because they're very inexpensive and sometimes they offer great value. But I don't, I don't really buy my wines that I collect there, very rarely. Uh, so I'm walking around and all of a sudden I look at the shelves and I see Marietta Ovine Red, eleven forty nine, And I go, I know Ovine Red, that's an old friend of mine. And I've had quite a number of past cubes and they're lot numbers. Uh, the last lot number I had was lot number 71, and it's one of the wines that I thought needed more time. And usually the Marietta Ovine Red uh, is very eminently drinkable and ready to go. And cuvee, uh, lot number 71, was a bit reluctant and needed a little more time. So I'm really looking forward to tasting lot number 73. So a little bit about Marietta. In 1978, Chris Bilbro uh, went into wine business uh, in Sonoma, and he bought up wines from growers. He sourced these wines from very old vines. A lot of them are gnarly and old, and they really weren't being bought by other people and prized. And what Chris Bilbro did was he blended the wine. He, he bought five or six different varieties, mainly Zinfandel is an old vine red, but there's Barbera, there's other wines, uh, older varieties in California that were planted by Italian immigrants. And at the time, in 78, that's when Mantavi was really revving his engine, and there were varietal wines, meaning one type of wine, Cabernet Sauvignon, 100%, Zinfandel, 100%, Pinot Noir, 100%. So... He went in and he was using many different varieties and, and making a wine that could be put on tables for very, very good prices. And he was a gentleman who worked on a handshake. And he got to know all the growers of, of, of these old vines. 
And for 40 years, they've been producing this Obine Red, and it has quite a following. <coughs> so the, the major thing that I always say about wines is QPR, quality price ratio. And that's their theory at Murrieta. Chris passed on, and his vineyard, Marietta, now is run by his son, Scott. They own 310 acres, and besides Ovine Red, they do wines that cost about $25. Uh, there's the Arme, which is a uh, Rhone variety, Cristo, which is a Cabernet Sauvignon, and um, there's a Roman, which is Zinfandel, and uh, they're more specific and he's making some single vineyard wines also, but they're moderately priced. So think about what he did. So we're gonna taste the wine and hopefully it's gonna be another outstanding old wine red. So here we are. We got the bottle of old wine red, lot number 73, which I have not tasted, but has received the glowing 95 points. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to pop it, pour it, and we'll see if it's 95 in my mind, even though I don't do ratings, so number ratings. Okay. So the winery makes about 75, 80,000 cases a year, and most of it is ovine red. And... As I said, the vast majority is all vine red, uh, but this is an opportunity to taste wine that's made to be put on the table. A lot of California vineyards are bought as vanity possessions. What do I mean by that? I remember when I lived in California, my real estate broker who sold me my house said, I just sold a house to someone and they sold their tech company and they just bought a vineyard. He would, I want you two to get together and I want you to taste wines. Let me pour it in here. We'll let it sit. Okay, the old vine red. Back in the picture. So back to the story of the person who bought the winery. And I went to visit him. I went to his house and this guy sold his technology company and it was like a billion and a half dollars he got. So the first thing he did was he bought a vineyard. And I went over, he had the wines, he opened up a couple of wines for me. And the wines were well made. Uh, but the problem that I have with a lot of California wines is two. Two things, besides being overpriced at, out of the, uh, when they have no history and they price their wine $75, dollars $150. I think you have to earn that price. You have to have a, a history, a track record. And uh, I don't think most of them care because it's about vanity. They're buying a beautiful vineyard. They have the money and it's like a jewel on their hand. Come visit my vineyard. And you see that in Tuscany too and in the south of France. Uh, Brad Pitt owns uh, a uh, estate in Provence. And uh, you have to be able to make wines that make sense in the prices. And, and I think Nancy Pelosi owns a vineyard. Uh, uh, the governor of California, Newsom, owns, I think, Plump Jack. And those wines are 100. Then, you know, Plump Jack's 150 bucks. And is it a good wine? Yeah. But uh, to me, something like Marietta, it was founded upon the principle of making good everyday wines and putting wines on the table. And Chris Bilbro achieved that. And he's kind of like a hero to me that he was able to put wine on the table at reasonable prices. And there's too much of the other stuff going on where people think they want their wines to be more expensive than other people. And Chris never thought that. Chris wanted to be affordable and the quality price ratio is always great on those wines. So let's give this a whirl.
sweet fruit. I need something white background here to see the color. Medium, medium deep red. Beautiful fruit, beautiful fruit. Um, smells like uh, wine just out of the barrel and, and, and the fruit just jumps up. Love the nose. Very light to medium body, not heavy. The fruit just jumps out. It's plummy, not really dark uh, black fruits, sort of in between uh, red and black fruits, probably because of the blend of the grapes, but the fruit is just so delicious in this wine. And it's so balanced and well made. That nose, blackberry, and so easy to drink, but it's so well balanced and it's going to age. You can keep this wine for a few years and, and that is freaking delicious. That is one good, great glass of wine, I'd pay three times the price for this wine. It is just so perfectly made, fruity, soft without being uh, hard around the edges, just delicious. And, and I think it lives up to that rating. And I really had a question about it, but... Um, you should do yourself a favor whether you buy it at Costco. Costco has it at a very, very inexpensive price. Uh, most of the uh, stores, and I bought Marietta Old Wine from other sources, and they average about $15 a bottle, which is still a wonderful wine. So Chris Bilbaro, bro, uh, passed years ago, but he still lives on in this wine. And his family keeps putting outstanding wines on the table and a drink to Chris. He lives on. So I like this wine so much, I have the coverage of my inventory now. I bought a case of it. And as I said again, if you can find this, run out, try a bottle, and then buy a case.